For more than a decade, Culture Rings has been specializing in delivering experiences, helping people travel, discover, and immerse in a variety of experiences. And the corona pandemic should not stop us from beaming you out of wherever you are so that you can continue to discover the treasures of this beautiful world and its people. One of the greatest benefits of being in our line of work is that we get to meet some amazing individuals who come to us for our tours and then become our friends. One such person is Berit Lindholm from Stockholm, Sweden, who pointed me and in fact kept pointing me in the direction of Shanti Bhavan until she got me there. And um, that's where we are now. And thanks to that introduction, we have today's webinar, which is uh, featuring Shilpa Raj, a product of Shanti Bhavan. And um, we're gonna be discussing Shanti Bhavan and taking you on a vicarious journey through Shanti, Shanti Bhavan. To give you a little context, for millennia, the Indian subcontinent has not known the meaning of equality. Differentiating dimensions like class, religion, region, tribe, gender, language, overlap each other into a very complex web, making the Indian caste system the strongest undercurrent that dictates the way we in India live and let live, even in this day and age of technology. What we dress like, how we speak, where we live, the school we send our children to, who our friends are, who we work with, who we don't work with, who we report to, uh, what our kitchens look like, the plumbing in our homes, everything has been decided by the caste system. And for, for centuries, the country has been bogged down by prejudice. It was the dream of a young Indian American businessman called Dr. Jod to remove that prejudice. He strongly believed that quality education can prove that no matter where you were born, if you have it, you can rise to any height. He realized this dream by building Shanti Bhava. Today, sons and daughters of impoverished factory workers and construction laborers are employed with top MNCs around the world not only looking into a bright future for themselves, but in fact, rescuing their families from generations of debt and paying it forward as well, changing thousands of lives each. One such student who has been able to strongly spread the message of how Shanti Bhavan changes lives, citing her own example, is our guest, Shilpa Raj, the author of the transfixing memoir, The Elephant Chaser's Daughter. Shilpa is a product of Shanti Bhavan. Her book sheds light on India's casteist society and Shilpa's refusal to allow um, that society to bog her down. Welcome, Shilpa. Thank you, Kaveri. Thank you for having me on your show today and uh, giving me a chance to share um, not just my story, but the beautiful story of Shanti Bhavan and what it's doing to empower lives. Thank you. We also have with us um, the per someone I met on the same day as I met Shilpa at her book reading, um, Farah Gilani. Uh, she's a British expat living in Bangalore since 2017. Uh, and in fact, we, we became friends and now we're even writing a book together. Which Farah is like my sister now. And I'm so happy that she's joining us here today. Within a week of Farah's arrival in Bangalore, she found her calling coming from Shanti Bhavan. Um, and uh, she believed strongly in their cause and their mission and joined them within one week as a head office volunteer. Um, she's been working with them, supporting them with fundraising, marketing material, um, and also working with college students and the alumni to ensure that they can live out the Shanti Bhavan motto, which is, be the best they can be. Welcome, Farah. Hi, everybody. Thank you so much for having me, Kavri. Um, I didn't intend to have a huge elephant behind me. Um, I know Devani, who's on this call, knows that this is actually part of my living room, but it does seem appropriate for today. Um, I Yes, I met Shilpa and uh, Kavri for the first time on the first day at Shilpa's book launch, um, and they're two of my favorite people. So this is like a reunion, uh, a reunion with t those two favorite people and uh, visiting my favorite place, which is Shanti Bhavan. Amazing. 
Thank you, Pala and Chilpa. I'm so glad. Yes, my favorite people on this show right now together. Um, I'm going to get on to Shilpa, the questions that I have for Shilpa because I'm sure a lot of the audience and there are many more signing in and also watching us right now live on Facebook. Um, audience, please keep sending your questions so that we can keep up with them. Um, Shilpa, can you maybe tell us, I mean, many of us have read your book. I've read it more than once. And uh, we've also watched Daughters of Destiny. So we've been following you. But tell us in your words today, what do you imagine would have been your life if not for Shanti Bhavan? Uh, it scares me to think of what my life would have been like if I hadn't been fortunate uh, to fall into the care of Shanti Bhavan. Um, to begin with, um, let me start from the beginning. Um, I was born in a poor village in rural Karnataka. Do you want to do you want to share any pictures while you do this? Should I? Um... Sure, sure, Kaveri. I uh, yes. In fact, you can show the you can share the first picture because that shows my parents. Uh huh. Um, in the village. Okay, I actually have all your pictures open. So what I'll do is, if I don't open the right one, you can just guide me. It's, it's the very first one. It's the... So yeah, it's opened in this order. Okay. Is that, uh, are you able to see it? Uh, no, no, Kaveri, I'm not able to see it. Okay, okay, give me a moment. I'm just going to share my screen where I have pictures of Shilpa. The first one, yes, the, the one, yes, this is the one. So this this was actually even before I joined the school. So I was barely, barely three years old. And you can see me in the far right corner uh -huh. um, in, my, in a green frock. My, I'm sitting on my mother's lap. The previous okay. one, my father's standing. He's the one holding the cow. Two cows. Yeah, so we were celebrating a local uh, festival during the harvest season. And as you can see, uh, there are uh, mud brick homes in the background. So my father, the, the man next to him, the young man next to him is his brother. So both of them were uh, in both of them got into the uh, illicit trade of brewing liquor, homemade liquor. And this trade was taught to them by their grandfather. So it was a family business and it was passed down from generation to generation. And once you know, um, once you have, once you are brewing liquor, you also tend to bring it back home and have it yourself. So as a young child, I grew up where uh, surrounded by family members and neighbors in the local community who had sadly become staunch alcoholics so life as a child back home was one of uncertainty one of witnessing alcoholism on a daily basis and the women were the victims um, of this because they would bear the brunt of their husband's alcoholism and so my life if i hadn't come to shanti bhavan i can imagine i can very easily imagine that uh, it would have been one of hardship it would have been one of having to witness domestic violence and alcoholism on a daily basis. It would have been one of being trapped in the overpowering patriarchal system that women, even today, continue to be a victim of. So my life changed for the better, my life and um, the, my, so in fact, I think my life has changed for the better and through this, my children and their children will also get to live a life of hope that hadn't been possible for my parents and those before them. So I feel, I strongly believe that what uh, Shanti Bhavan has done is not, is, hasn't, doesn't just stop with me. What it's done is bringing about generational impact that's going to go on for years. Shilpa, when did it happen that you know, you, you were this child who was growing up uh, in that environment. You faced all the prejudice, not just, uh, you know, from the outside, but also within because you were a girl child. Uh, when did it change from you being the victim to be you being the, the observer? 
and you being the warrior who's actually documenting your own life. And at such a young age to be able to take that witness stand, right? And see it as a third person and describe it for others. When did that happen? Um, I would say, Kaveri, that it actually happened during the financial crisis of 2008. Uh, that brought into question whether Shanti Bhavan as a project could continue and whether I, would, I could continue being a beneficiary of the power of Shanti Bhavan. And only when you come very close to losing the things that you value, the most you realize its value. So and during those hard days when we didn't know if Shanti Bhavan could uh, survive the global financial meltdown, that was when I began to document my life as a student, my life as uh, a child of a child growing up in two very distinct worlds and what that actually meant for me and where I wanted my path to lead me to. So um, I think it happened very early on. Probably the crisis, financial crisis pushed me to ask very important questions that I would have never thought of. And uh, in that distinct moment in my young life, I began to um, take notes. And in the process of documenting what was happening around me and within me, I feel I was holding on to the best parts of my life and that had to do with Shanti Bhavan. And I was in fact going to come to that confusion that you must have experienced that's also described very beautifully in uh, the documentary Daughters of Destiny. How did you as a child deal with that? You know, going home to a very different world and living a very different life with very different values in some way uh, to what you live in Shanti Bhavan? I've, um, anyone who's lived who's probably moved uh, to a different country can relate to this because I felt like I was moving in and out of two distinctly different and contrasting countries. Home felt like a country of its own compared to what life was like at Shanti Bhavan. And there were moments, especially as a teenager, when uh, the, the stark contrast in the ways these two worlds function and the way people behaved differently in them it was during my teenage years when these uh, things became very clear to me and turned into a, a huge, um, like a flood of confusion. And I, as a young, as a confused teenager was trying to figure out why, how did I come to be in these two worlds in the first place? And what does it hold in store for me? And do I have to continue to live in two worlds? Can I just choose one world and be content in living in that one world that I choose? So I didn't, there were times when I fluctuated between uh, wanting to return to a life, a less complicated life. That's actually ironic given the fact that life at home is very complex, but I felt having being a student at Shanti Bhavan, where you had to focus on so many, doing well in so many subjects, having dreams, having to have goals and feeling like a failure when you didn't achieve those goals. Like there were moments when I felt life would be simple if I was back at home. But those were in my dark moments. But, uh, but the good sense in me uh, led me to realize that going back home could not be an option. Because once I chose that world, it would be the end of all my dreams. It would be the end of the dreams that my parents had for me. They were hopeful that I would create a different path for myself and everybody who is to follow in my family. So every decision that I make, um, it's not just going to affect my life, but the lives of my family because they are tied to it. And uh, the friends that you have now, uh, you obviously still go home. Uh, has it changed for you now, the, the kind of social circle that you keep uh, when you go home? Do you still hang out with the people that uh, were your neighbors back then? Yes. Um, I One thing right from very early on, Kaveri, back at Shanti Bhavan, our teachers and caretakers would tell us that when we go home, we should offer what we've learned at school to our friends and our neighbors because I've been a beneficiary in ways that they have never had an opportunity to be. 
and so when i go home i would try to go and talk to the neighbors or people would stop me on the road and ask me how school was or why i had such a uh, had why i had a boyish haircut when i was 12 or 13 because girls in the village are supposed to have long braids so people found me to be very different from how the other kids were growing up in the village and um, i also noticed that there was a um, lot of jealousy at home too mm-hmm. especially among relatives and neighbors so my family would try to protect me from it by not allowing me to go out of the house too much too frequently or especially after dark for safety issues so i would say my uh, interactions with the neighbors were limited to the extent when i would take the effort to share my life and my learnings with them but today they see me as someone um, who's never going to return to a simple life in the village they see me almost like a visitor to the village a guest and they, people do stop me on the road to ask me questions and find out what i'm doing and why i'm not married yet <laughs> so, so i'm still like i'm still like an enigma to them and but i can see that they're happy that my life turned out better than uh, what it would have been had i stayed stayed back what do they do now shilpa your parents my mother still works as a housemaid uh, but due to her failing health she had acute asthma and i had asked her to stop uh, traveling into the city to work because the travel was uh, had a real taken had taken a, a bad toll on her health so she tries to find work inside the village itself so she goes and works as a housemaid in the homes of rich people in our village my father still continues to be an elephant chaser it's translated into a government job he's the first a uh, man he's the first person in our entire family for generations to a uh, bag a government job so he's very proud of it and it does come uh, with a lot of uh, benefits as well such as a pension so he doesn't plan on giving up uh, on that job no matter how hard it might be at times he sometimes gets called at odd hours uh, to rush to a certain village to chase elephants that have encroached upon the human settlements so despite its hardships he realizes the value of this job and he's holding on to it right thank you shilpa i mean that was beautiful sharing um i'm just i'm sorry i'm snooping through the pictures that i have on my computer and i think it wouldn't be fair not to share them with our audience so will you take us through the pictures if i open them one more time sure sure kavin super they're beautiful pictures <laughs> I want to see pictures of you uh, five years from now. <laughs> That I'm going to come to where you're planning to go once the lockdown ends. So this was the first picture, of course. Yes, this was actually on my first day at the school. Uh, that's me, the t- little one, standing <laughs> between my parents, and uh, that's we are standing against the school vehicle that had come to our village and picked us up from our village. and brought us to the school and the the older girl who who my mother is holding on to is actually one of uh, my seniors she is from the first batch of shanti bhavan and she graduated in the year 2020 uh, 2010 that's me on my first day <laughs> i always loved having wearing flowers so i have you as you can see i have a bunch of flowers pinned onto my hair and that was the day my life changed that was the beginning of all the good things that were to happen to me do you want to describe your first day yes um i do talk about it in quite um an extent in my book because that day had a huge impact on me given the fact that that was the beginning of a huge transformation photo i do look confused because i just could not understand where my parents were taking me and why they had brought me to this strange place and and the worst part was having to leave them uh they left without saying goodbye because that they were trying to avoid uh having me cry and break out you know in angry outbursts and confusion so they they snuck away and i found myself in this strange place and i was distracted by the toys 
that and the courts and the curtains and the windows things that i'd never seen before and the and i noticed very distinctly i still remember that i was very uh, amused to see that to find that the ceiling of the room was quite high compared to uh, the low ceiling of my hut back at home so you so, described uh, sorry to interrupt you but you described a few things that you'd never seen before yes and the word court yes the court the court was pretty scary for me because it was the first time that that very first night when i was asked to step on to it climb on to it and go to sleep and i was used to sleeping at home on the floor with uh, my mother by my side and my siblings so lying on a cot for the first time was scary and also this very lonely because you didn't have the comfort of your loved ones next to you oh. <laughs> okay imagine so I went to boarding school to Shilpa. Okay, I was eleven. I, that. <laughs> I also had a hanky, like I see here. I had a handkerchief pinned down to my uh, dress, also when my parents came to me. So you can relate to some of the things I'm describing, Kaveri. Very much, yes. <laughs> yes, this was when I was six years old. By now, I've changed so much. You can notice even my uh, the change in hairstyles. For two years. This is two years after you came in. Yes, I came in at the age of four. So by now, I had already begun to fall in love with the place that had become my new home. And children are very resilient, so it didn't take us very long to adapt to the new ways of life that we were being exposed to at school. And every day was an adventure because every day you were learning a new skill. You were learning um, something, uh, a new skill such as. how to sit at a dining table how to hold a fork and a spoon or how to say thank you when the aunties handed a, you a sweet so life had completely transformed and every day there was something new to learn so oh, wow okay <laughs> yeah, this is <laughs> this is actually one of my favorite pictures i really struggled with math all through my school days <laughs> and that's one of my teachers he was a volunteer from boston shanti bhavan has lots of volunteers who come and spend their time with the children and become uh, friends for life and you can see the sheer agony on his face as he tries to get me through that maths problem is the, is he holding his head about you or the problem yes about me he just doesn't know whether to cry or to laugh he he's, you know, he doesn't know what to do that's me with my grandmother i'm much older there i was probably in the ninth grade and my grandmother has always played and continues to play a very special role in my life um especially given the fact that my mother was away for almost 10 years when she worked as a housemaid abroad because she wanted to find a better job opportunity so that she could financially uplift our families and it was very brave on her part to leave all of us even though her children were very young she, so as a young mother she had she made that decision to leave us or she was made to make that decision and go abroad and work as a housemaid so my mother grandmother looked after me when i went home uh, for the school during school vacations and she and i had a few tumultuous years as well because she wanted something for me that would have completely destroyed my future and um, made me resigned to the kind of hard life that she herself has had led as a woman in the village so the coming back to the confusion of living in two worlds one of my one of the conflicts that i had was whether i had to appease my grandmother and marry her son and settle uh, to a settle you know to a, resign to the simple life in my village or decide to choose a path of my own chase after a career and go places and in as a young girl as a teenager though during that time i myself didn't know what was best for me because i was trying to please her as well because her happiness was important to me and um what did she want for you she wanted she as a as a woman had not benefited uh, the way i had from a quality education so she didn't really think that i was going to have a great life 
with the education that I was receiving because she had she herself hadn't seen what education could do to a woman. Mm-hmm. And it was only through my life now that she's actually gotten to witness that a quality education does wonders for a woman and the lives of everybody that she touches. So she wanted me to marry her son and settle with her in the village. Oh, that means your uncle. She yes, wants- that, that's a very common custom in our village where consanguineous marriages are actually uh, very common. And it's a way of also protecting the girl from not, it also saves the family from having to pay dowry. Yeah. Because when you marry someone within your own family, you don't have to give them a dowry. And um, yeah, it's a very commonly practiced tradition back at home. And uh, probably I wouldn't even have, wouldn't even have criticized it or seen it as something that's unhealthy if I hadn't come to Shanti Bhavan and uh, been given a chance to see life through a different lens. Wow. So yeah, back to the photos again. These are your friends in school. Yes, these are my uh, classmates. There are only few, these are just the girls. We were 24 when we joined Shanti Bhavan and there were 12 girls and 12 boys. So as you can see, all of us look so happy in this picture, but um, as we were, we literally were each other's siblings and there was sibling rivalry between us. There was competition as to who had the longest hair or who was taller than the other or who could who was better at English. So just like siblings do, we were literally one another's siblings and we continue to be each other's strongest source of support. Yes. And the friendships that were built then, back then at Shanti Bhavan continues today. I'm still in touch with all of them. We still talk about our lives and we share our stories and our experiences. And I know that in a moment of crisis, a Shanti Bhavan family member is going to be the first one that I'm going to reach out to for can help. You tell about, can you tell us about any of these girls? You can maybe pick one and tell us. Sure. Um, who has a story slightly different from yours? Uh, sure. sure. Um, actually, the un- underlying our stories is the common theme of poverty and hardship and trying to fight patriarchal injustice. So I think we all are common in that way. But let me share a happy story. Um, Amrita, the girl in the far left corner with a big, with a very bright smile, she's actually in Kuala Lumpur pursuing her MBA. And she and I uh, had, she and I were very strong-minded and we, and strong-minded girls and we wouldn't give in to each other very easily. So we've had our own share of fights like siblings do. But even today, we keep in touch. She sends me pictures of her life back in uh, Kuala Lumpur. And I know that she's cheering for me and I do the same too. Wonderful. That's a very special picture because that's me receiving my uh, graduation certificate when I completed 14 years of schooling at Shanti Bhavan and was preparing to move into the outside world for the first time. Uh, Dr. George handed me my certificate and um, it was a momentous occasion because a ch- you had come to this place, uh, Shanti Bhavan had taken you into its care as a four-year-old child and after 14 years of residential life, you were finally heading on to the next adventure and the next chapter of your life. And the f- And one thing hadn't changed. Even now, um, like it has been from day one, Dr. George and Ajit and the caretakers and teachers continue to be the family that provides you stability and love and guidance. That's not changed. Wonderful. That's actually me with some of the some of my juniors. Uh, they're several years younger than me, and as you can see. One of the special aspects of Shanti Bhavan is that it gives you an opportunity. uh, The school gives you an opportunity to grow up along the girls and uh, gives an 
opportunity for girls and boys to grow up in a healthy way with each other right from quite early on so the management could have decided to either keep it as an all girls school or an all boys school but they went against the common custom and decided that it was healthy for young girls and boys to learn how to grow up treating one another with respect and that's the way it's a core value that all of us have imbibed into our lives and into our internal value system and i really admire the boys and i'm uh, every time when i think back about about think back as to their own confusions in their mind because when they go back home they have a very different set of role models they have fathers who are beating their mothers and their and the female siblings they have fathers i have had uh, classmates who've had fathers burn their wives as well so and kill and in one instance even kill his there was a man who killed his husband so when the boys would go back home and see a very different set of role models um there must have been a confusion into their mind in their mind as to what kind of men they themselves wanted to grow up to be and when they would come back to shanti bhavan they would have dr george and ajit modeling for them what a good man is and what how a man is supposed to be so it's always been wonderful to watch the boys come of age and uh, grow into them into their strong selves knowing that these are boys that are going to go out into the world and never raise a hand on a single woman or ever allow themselves to mistreat a woman that's great shall thank you so much for sharing that and uh, I, i'm sure there are more questions and as they come i'm going to keep track of people asking questions to you uh one of them uh greta who uh is now my friend too and is right now online she was saying that she's been trying to buy your book online so i've just made her a promise on your behalf that she's going to get a signed copy sure i'll make sure that you keep that promise kaveri <laughs> i'll get that signed copy to you <laughs> thank you so much i have i have a couple of your signed copies with me too just in case in case you said no shilpa <laughs> thank you so much and we'll come back to you but i'm now very curious to talk to fara uh fara you're there hi i'm there hi i love the elephant behind you i know chasing me <laughs> chasing you <laughs> tell us a little bit about you fara tell us how how you got involved with shanti bhavan so uh my life is not nearly as interesting as shilpa's but um when i knew that i was coming to india through my husband's job i uh started looking up different things about it and people had recommended this documentary called uh, daughters of destiny on netflix and i thought oh i'll watch that when i'm in bangalore so we're in this temporary tiny flat actually um watching it thick and i and i think i think just from the beginning we were hooked but i think the in particular the third episode which features you very strongly heavily shilpa both uh, vic my husband and i looked at each other and, like, <laughs> and that was the moment where i said you know i need to call them i need to see if i can offer something um as you know we're all in lockdown now for coronavirus um but even before then i knew i wasn't a good homeschool teacher <laughs> um i and um when i contacted the school um i knew it was very far away and that i wouldn't be able to teach i have three children of my own and i'm not that patient but i felt that i potentially had some other skills to offer and the head office was not too far from me maybe 15 20 minutes from my house So um I went I was interviewed by two uh, fantastic ladies who I work for uh, Denny and Shanti um and at the very beginning I was lucky that they didn't have so many things uh, so many people uh, on board to do with you know to do everything so actually at the beginning I was um Shanti always says with volunteers they're like water they fill in all the cracks and that is actually what I was doing when I first got there so I was helping Dr George with funding proposals or setting up a brochure uh, as marketing material um helping Denny uh with you know all, all sorts of things um a, a 
review for the corporate, uh, looking at what Shanti Bhavan was doing. But um, gradually, um, as they got more and more qualified people in to come and do those roles, I started helping out much more with the graduates. Um, and I felt that I was in a unique position as an expat to actually connect both uh, the people of Shanti Bhavan with the people I knew from the uh, multinationals and uh, expat community for the benefit of both. So um, even now I uh, can bore for England about Shanti Bhavan. It's the thing I talk about the most. And um, when I started saying to people, you should watch this, you know, I work here and people said, what can we do to help? And there were so many different ways that they could help um, in terms of opportunities, funding, um, colleges, but also jobs and internships. So I really see my role um, at the moment as trying to get uh, the best relationships between the people who are here in Shanti Bhavan, <coughs> sorry, the people who are here in Bangalore who can help Shanti Bhavan um, so that both can benefit. So what is Shanti Bhavan? Um, maybe that's the question we haven't asked, which we should have asked maybe in the beginning. Uh, yes, okay. Let so anxious to get, get on with uh, the elephant chaser's daughter. And Shilpa, I didn't ask you to do a reading, but, but I will shortly after we finish with Farah. Um, Farah, can you tell us what is Shanti Bhavan? Yeah, uh, for sure. Um, I'm actually just going to share my screen because... Um, I can uh, talk about Shanti Bhavan for a very long time, but I think almost the best way to talk about it is through, um, can you see? Mm -hmm. um, the best way to uh, uh, describe it is through the Netflix trailer, which describes it more beautifully than I can. So it's just two, two minutes um, and I'll play this. I believe now that from the beginning I was destined to be different. Shanti Bhavan is a school for the poorest of the poor. We take children at the age of four and they are with us for the rest of their young adult days. The mission of Shanti Bhavan is to get these children out of poverty. It is to break the fate that their parents have been trapped in. We are here to bring up your children, to love them and encourage them. Only one child is taken per family. I have to use that opportunity in order to change the life that I left behind. My mom sent me to Shanti Bhavan because she was the only person who loved me. When I was small, we lived in a cash house. Everything was in this room. In addition to uplifting my family, I have the responsibility of giving back to society. I've got a lot to lose. It's now or never for me. Suddenly one day I woke up and I said, my God, the money is gone. There was only two options, lie down and die or just go forward. Closing the school would mean sending all the children back to where they came from. I knew I couldn't live with it. My father too. I am the answer of my mother's name. I am who I am because of her. I will show the world I am that girl who makes doorways of freedom, hope and relief. Not only for my mother, but for all those out there who are in need. I, I believe no. I don't know uh, how many times I have watched that, but um, I still get goosebumps whenever I see it. Um, you know, you said, what is Shanti Bhavan? If you actually ask that to the different students here, they would come up with so many different uh, ideas. They would say family, they would say freedom. They would quote the mission of Shanti Bhavan, you know, to break the cycle of poverty. Um, physically, Shanti Bhavan is a school uh, in Tamil Nadu. It takes children from below the poverty line from the age of four to 18. And then we carry on and pay for college. So, um, 
the education, the hostel fees, all of those things um, are still paid for by Shanti Bhavan until they've completed their higher education. Um, and as Shilpa has mentioned, because it is like a family, we're all still in touch long after they've graduated college um, and, you know, still help each other. But, um, and Shilpa was actually one of the first uh, children to ever go to Shanti Bhavan, because it was uh, um, established in 1997. But that is a 17 year long academic intervention in a child's life. And we think that it helps these children who have come to us um, from uh, poverty, from sometimes, as Shilpa had mentioned, domestic violence or difficulties, gender inequality. Um, and through this 17 years, they end up with these, you know, uh, adorable, safe, uh, secure individuals who have their own freedom of expression. They can stand confident uh, on an equal footing with anybody in society. Um, and they have the opportunity to become a change maker, not just for themselves, um, though their lives are changed so much for the better, but they try and impact on individuals around them too. Um, sorry to interrupt you, but there are so many nonprofit schools in the country, right? How is Shanti Bhavan different? I mean, um, honestly, when I was talking about the 17 years, that is quite different in and of itself. I haven't seen any schools that take uh, their academic intention that seriously to take from four till 21, 22. So one of the things is definitely the length of intervention. But the other thing, and I got this from the website, is the um, breadth. So when you, there are so many fantastic schools, you know, trying to do so much for the poor. A lot of what they offer is on the left-hand side of this. So the food, um, shelter, clothing, um, medical attention when needed, a community. But what we think sets Shanti Bhavan apart is uh, the things that are here. So the, we say rigorous academics, uh, leadership skills, and global values. So when I say rigorous academics, um, we take the hardest board uh, in the country, so the ICSE and ISD boards, um, which are really, really tough. Um, and so we get the best teachers, as you see. Um, and we do really need good teachers to go into, uh, give a good grounding in all these subjects so the children can succeed, but also that we focus not just on what to learn, but how they learn. Um, and so that critical thinking aspect. And that is also supplemented um, by, you know, Shilpa had mentioned that we had volunteers coming from abroad. I think there have been something like over 900 volunteers from around the world who have come during uh, at all the time Shanti Bhavan has been open to come and give their different perspective from their different culture. And the children get all this and absorb all this, um, which is just a, an incredible education by itself. Um, we also uh, are lucky to, use some, to have some people volunteer with us who have specific, um, uh, a specialty in a specific field. So for example, um, we have the Artists Striving to End Poverty, which is a charity that comes um, and takes over at Shantibunk, takes over a summer camp in visual and performing arts for the children. So they learn arts, they have sports, and they take the sports very seriously. At the moment, we have a graduate who's at uh, EY, but she also plays for the Karnataka uh, football team. Um, so these values, like this idea of um, doing well in sports and everything is inculcated from a young age. Um, and music. And music is um, really something special at Shanti Bhavan. I don't feel when I visit it, if I haven't heard the choir, I don't feel like I've had a complete visit. Um, but there's also a performative aspect to this, which helps with the other part that I said made Shanti Bhavan unique, which is the, um, the leadership skills. So um, we need our, these children to be super confident to be able to perform in front of so many people. Um, one of the ways they do this is through the assembly. And I wondered, Shilpa, uh, would it be possible to talk us through uh, the assembly every morning at Shanti Bhavan? Because oh, that's sure. what they work about. Oh, I'd love to because uh, that's a very special time uh, for me. Uh, now looking back, 
at my own life as a student there, I realized that the assemblies had such a significant impact on our student life. Basically, the assemblies that one uh, is a time during the school day when the entire community gathers at the main assembly hall or in the school building. And uh, from you have everyone from children starting right up from kindergarten all the way to the senior most class in 12th grade who assemble there with their teachers and house mothers and uh, Dr. George and the administrative staff when Ajit's in uh, India or he sp spends a lot of time at Shanti Bhavan so he's there as well. So the entire community gathers for a moment of prayer. We uh, address our prayer addresses a universal God. We do not uh, address any specific God pertaining to any particular religion. And we, uh, it's a universal prayer asking for peace and harmony and tr trying uh, to teach us the importance of humane values like kindness, honesty, integrity. So after the prayer is shared, we, the children share the world news. They present the world news to the rest of the school and the audience is given a chance to ask questions to the, to the presenters on what their opinions are on those particular news events. And after that is over, Dr. George would come up and share his opinion about that particular event. And so as you can already see, there's so much sharing and learning that's happening. So it's, it's a very powerful moment of the school day. Yeah, and I think then you have the, uh, the virtue of the wind espoused and the choir sings and there's the Shanti Bhavan song, which my daughter knows yes. by heart, <laughs> even though she's not a child of Shanti Bhavan. Um, so all of, but it's not uh, just the assembly. We have positions of responsibility throughout uh, your life at Shanti Bhavan. So editor of the school newspaper, event head for the graduation, um, uh, you know, helping with the, with, with the class representative. The idea is, so the motto, as Kavri said in the beginning of Shanti Bhavan, is the best you can be. Now, um, we know that we all have very different talents. I can't write as well as Shilpa, um, but I would love to have a different uh, opportunity to shine. So we give our children all these different opportunities to be the best they can be and shine. And then they, they feel like they're succeeding. And uh, these kids really do succeed. These, these uh, six students are in college now. Um, and our kids, once they've finished their 14 years at Shanti Bhavan, as I mentioned, that doesn't finish their education as far as we're concerned. So they get into the best colleges in Bangalore, um, Christ College, Mount Carmel, which is where Carberry went to, Jyoti Nivas, St. Joseph's College of Commerce, and various engineering schools. And there are also um, some of our students win scholarships to study abroad. So we have students in Japan, students in America. Um, and then they go from there to get these jobs in various different fields. So we have somebody working at Reuters, someone working as a community development worker or in a, a charity or as a teacher. We also have a lot of students who are doing software engineering or a CEO of a company, I think, and um, uh, at famous uh, names like Goldman Sachs, EY, uh, Deloitte, all these um, fantastic companies and our students having come from the slums in most cases are then able to hold their own at a multinational where you know my husband works and maybe some other people here work at so we know that this we are a results driven organization and we know that our model works um, after these uh, children have completed or, or have, have uh, worked for a certain amount of time a lot of them go on to do masters as well so Shilpa here um, has graduated more than once and um, so at Shanti Bhavan because she's done a master's you'll talk more about um, your higher education later Shilpa because it's an incredible journey um, and also Amrutha who Shilpa was mentioning before um, she's studying 
um, at the Asia School of Business in Kuala Lumpur. Her story is actually up on the Shanti Bhavan website, along with a lot of story, other stories from our children. And I really would recommend you go to shantibhavanchildren.org and have a look at them. Um, sometimes they can be heartbreaking, but they're always stories of hope with a hopeful ending. Um, Farah, can I ask you a question? Yes, sorry. All these, all these children who, whose life Shanti Bhavan has changed, in what way do they pay it forward and help others? Do they pass on or do they just take the benefit and move on? Oh, that would be so sad. <laughs> um, no. Um, so I've had a lot of fun actually uh, finding photos cute photos of the children at Shanti Bhavan, especially when they're wearing uh, matching outfits. But there is a point to this slide, um, and that's about the multiplicative effects of what Shanti Bhavan does. Or as Dr. George puts it so beautifully, if one child is successful, she can bring 1,000 others forward. So um, our ch I actually asked for some statistics from the head office, and they gave me some amazing ones. So it was that 100%, so every single college, uh, every single graduate um, has, gives back between 50 to 80% of their salary to their families, to their communities, and to other children in need. So these wow. are children who have, who know what benefit they, uh, what a benefit they've been given through this education. And they want to share that with others. So a lot of Shanti Bhavan children will pay for their siblings or their cousins' education. Um, they won't get a Shanti Bhavan education, but it will be much uh, better education than they would have got otherwise. And it means that they can then help themselves. It's not just, uh, you know, that they then become independent and free. And freedom is a, a big part of this, Kavri. So... Uh, one thing that maybe uh, the attendees don't know is about the burden of intergenerational debt uh, on the poor here. So um, I'm going to put it really a crude example, but say somebody's grandfather had taken out a loan in an emergency for a, for a medical emergency. Um, the type of loans that the poor are given here traditionally um, has very, very high interest rates. And then the loan doesn't end with that person. So when that person mm -hmm. dies, the loan is passed down generations and each uh, uh, accruing this uh, horrendous interest the whole time. So you end up with uh, people of this generation then just working to pay off the interest on a loan that they are never ever going to be able to repay. Now, another statistic that I got from the head office for Shanti Bhavan students is that they earn more in the first five years, this is 100% of the graduates, that they have earned more in the first five years of their working life than their parents will earn in their whole lifetime. So that is the order of the type of salaries that these children can command. And then they can pay off those loans and they break uh, that burden and that slavery really um, and, so, and set them free. So, I mean, I think they pay it forward in so many ways and it's partly because they've had all this love and so they want to give out um, the same things to uh, others because of the values that they have. So 90% um, of our children also are in volunteer work um, and collectively they have already directly impacted three to five times their number. And if you think about it, then those people can then go and help another three to five people. Uh, if you keep going uh, uh, with that, then you will actually, you know, change, genuinely change India, change the world, uplift everybody. And uh, that's why I find Shanti Bhavan such a joyful project and feel really privileged to have been, you know, played a very, very small part in helping it because I think it really... Um, is something that's revolutionary and it's I'm so happy to be part of that revolution. That's wonderful. Mara, uh, Kaveri, uh, can I uh, just add something? Mm -hmm. I was just looking at all the pictures and if you notice um, the children look so happy, their eyes are so bright and everybody's just joyful. Yeah. Um, this translates into self-confidence which is something that the program tries to instill in the children every single day. And now, uh, as someone who's lived outside of Shanti Bhavan for many years, as someone who's been, who's, uh, been in college 
and seen a little of the outside life and what it is like. So now I've really come to understand the purpose of the program and what it and the confidence that it tries to instill very early on in the children because this is a confidence that I carry with me even today and then even in college there were moments when I would feel a little sad or a little uh, I would feel a little awkward that I didn't have fancy clothes as the as richer classmates of mine did but I would remind myself that uh, Back at Shanti Bhavan, my teachers had told me that those things don't matter. Where you were born, what kind of a family you were born into, or the financial circumstances that you were born into, were accidents of birth. And it doesn't matter if someone's richer than you. What truly matters at the end of the day is what kind of a human being you are, what are the values that you embody and carry with you and... Um, emulate and who are you um, as a person when it in a social group in a group are you someone who brings joy to others are you someone who tries to help those who are in need so that confidence also helps children like me um, fight the caste system in our minds because when we go home i would watch the way my father would be behave very subserviently in the presence of a landlord because he truly believed that he was not as worthy as the landlord. So, whereas I questioned it and I refused to um, look, uh, gaze, put my, focus my gaze on the ground or not stand confidently before the landlord because in my mind, the caste system didn't exist. So that is the power of what Shanti Bhavan does. It changes your mind. And no matter where you go, you carry the power of those values with you. So the circumstances might change, but your behavior doesn't because it's controlled by an enriched mind, by an empowered mind. That is a beautiful message, Shilpa. And by some magic, you happen to be in Shanti Bhavan right now. Yeah. Right? During this I'm just lucky to be here during the lockdown because I'm still a student. I'm still in college. I do not have the means to um, really live on my own at a time like this without. Uh, and it's quite scary to, I, I was actually supposed to head back to Delhi because that's where my college is, but I do not have a wide support system there. And it would have been very scary for me during this time to be all by myself. So we're very short for time, but do you think you can help us by giving us a very short tour outside of whatever's outside your window in Shanti Bhavan? I would love to do that, Kaveri. Just give me uh, a minute. I'm going to step out. Sure. In that minute, I'm very quickly going to share the links so people who would like to make donations towards Shanti Bhavan. Shara, I'm just summarizing because we're a little short of time. Oh, um, so I'm just going to uh, summarize how people, if they want to support, how can they do it? So this is for the audience. If you can take a screenshot of this page or get in touch with us at contact at culturings.com, we can direct you because no matter how um, amazing Vanessa Roth's documentary uh, is, it doesn't mean that it has sorted out Shanti Bhavan for the entire future to come. Fundraising is a non-stop problem for all institutions like Shanti Bhavan that are non-profit, that are dependent on charity, dependent on generosity. You can do corporate funding and you can actually become a sponsor for a space or a child, but you can also um, become an individual sponsor where you just donate as much as you can. It doesn't matter. There's no low figure. Anything that you contribute can help. So please have a look and take a, um, take a screenshot of this or get in touch with me to know how to contribute. I'm going to stop sharing the screen now so that Shilpa can take us. Sorry, Farah, I had to do that. Thank you. 
Is there something you want to add while Shilpa is walking? You can. Um, yes, I was going to say that um, actually some people have thought or mentioned to me that they believe we don't need funding because we've had this documentary and aren't we all sorted? <laughs> it's just sort of double-edged sword because of course uh, the documentary has raised so much awareness. But um, as Shilpa mentioned, we take in 13 boys, now 13 girls every year. And we're a population of over a billion people. Even with that amazing multiplicative effect that I was talking about, that's gonna take a long time. So we also have plans to open up another Shanti Bhavan, Shanti Bhavan 2, because we know this model works and we want to double our impact. So we are you know, definitely in need of both individual uh, sponsors, um, corporate funds, and also if there are job opportunities or um, internships or uh, academic opportunities abroad, these are all things that could really help our students and help the school. Thank you, Farah. Shilpa, you ready? Yes. <laughs> I'll show you a little of my home and, and Shanti Bhavan. Um, Ms. Bina, I'm going to disturb you for a few oh, minutes. <laughs> Just my table, please. This is Hi, Farah. So nice to see you. How are you? Yeah. Hello. Oh. That's Miss Bina. You might already recognize her from the movie. So Miss Bina is the vice principal of Shanti Bhavan. She's uh, been a integral and an integ integral yes. part of Shanti Bhavan for over 20 years now. So that means she raised me since I was five years old. <laughs> Hi, Kavi. Hi. <laughs> so Ms. Bina plays dual roles. She's a teacher, an administrator, and a mother figure to the children. Thank you, Ms. Bina. You're welcome. <laughs> oh, it's actually raining. Uh, I don't know if you can see, Kaveri. Let me know if you can see the view. I the area where I saw the molly, the beautiful yes. family, which made this is the main yeah. school building. This is where we have our assembly every morning, and I'll just show you a better view of it. You can hear the rain in the background. <laughs> That's where we have all our classrooms. Wow. This is the main school building, but uh, the preschoolers actually have their classroom in their dorm. They don't come to the main school building because as four-year-olds, it's quite intimidating. So they have their uh, private class classroom back in their dorms. Just... I think there's a problem with Shilpa's connection because uh, she's wandering around. <laughs> yes. I don't know how much I, the net is a bit, yeah. the internet connection gets a little weak. Otherwise, I would have liked to show you the rest of the school. Yeah, it would have been sure. lovely for the so, uh, This is just the walkway right outside the school building. And. <laughs> That's actually, I think it's Dr. Broken. George. Oh, you, hi, Farah. How are you? Hi, Dr. George. I'm so glad I can see your face. Dr. George, they can't see you properly. Farah, you might have to mute yourself so that we can see Dr. George. Um, how's it going? I don't see him in a bed. The... Oh, hi. Well, thank you for popping in and blessing, blessing our uh, little get together online, Dr. George. It's yes, something... yes, I, Shilpa told me uh, how, that something is going on. I don't know exactly what it is. <laughs> so it's, it's a lot of people, we're all locked down. And uh, there are a lot of people who've been wanting to know more about Shanti Bhava, meet Shilpa, see you, see the school, see how they can support the school. So um, we felt that this is one way to get them there, regardless of the lockdown. 
And it's so wonderful that you can actually be here for even a few seconds. Oh, sure, sure. Uh, it's very nice of you. Very nice of you to think about Shadi Bhavan at this time. You know? Oh, I can see some of the students there. Oh, these guys. They were just on their way to evening snack, Kaveri, or to a, for a game. Where were you? Yeah. Headed to. Yeah. For a game, so they just stopped by to say hello. Come, oh, boys. Hello. Wonderful. So nice to see you all. Are you being brave during the lockdown? Yeah. Yeah. So nice that you're in Shanti Bhavan. I'm at home with my, with my children. They're very bored and they wish they were in school. <laughs> Great. Wonderful. Thank you, Shilpa. Thank you, Dr. George and all the kids. Oh my God. It's so wonderful that we got to see okay. you. Okay. Very good. Thank you so much. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Thanks, Shilpa. So I'm just going to go back to sharing. Um, I think I'll talk right now. I'll talk to you. Shilpa, do you have a yes, few to read a few seconds, like just one, a few lines from your book for us? Oh, I don't sure. think we'll complete without that. Sure, sure, Kaveri. So while you're getting back to your desk, I'm just going to open up a slide so that um, people know what's coming up. So, sorry, I'm just going to open up our slide so that people know what else is coming up in the next week. Uh, so on the 9th of May, I have Thomas Anderson, who happens to be my father-in-law. He's Swedish and he traveled to a place called Bankaneer which is one of those um, very beautiful um, kingdoms from yesteryears, uh, which has still been preserved in its old glory by the prince and princess that lived there. We were hosted in the palace and given a private experience over three days um, of Royal India. And then we also popped in to see the lions of the Gir sanctuary. So he's going to be, unfortunately, in Swedish, but we will subtitle it. Um, he's going to be giving an account of his experience, but those who don't want to do Swedish, there is an experience uh, that is being put together by my client and friend, David Auburn, um, who's got a show called Searching for the Question Live, where he's invited me to talk about India, technology, and the caste system. So I'm going to be doing that uh, the best I can on the 5th of May at 1.30 p.m. India time. It says 2 p.m. on the invite but it's in fact 1.30 p.m. Um, and with that, I leave you uh, to Shilpa, who's gonna read a section of her book, and then we're gonna sign out. Um, remember to take a screenshot of this page, very important. Remember to support Shanti Bhavan. Remember that this is the only way that they can spread the impact that they already have. Um, it's a shame if we don't support them. Thank you, Farah. Thank you very much for being with us and guiding us and for being the pilot for the show. Um, I will talk to you soon. And Shilpa, over to you now. Thank you, Kaveri. Thank you, Farah. Um, I'll, I'll, uh, since we're short of time, I'll just read two paragraphs, Kaveri. I'll keep it short. So this is one of my favorite passages. Um, Until I came to Shanti Bhavan, I had never thought about looking pretty. Most of the time, I was dirty and wore simple clothes sued from my grandmother's worn-out saris. Occasionally, Amma cut my hair crookedly with blunt scissors when she thought it was too long for me to manage. No one talked about hairstyles. I had never washed my hair with shampoo, shoes, or put on face lotion. This, But the absence of those luxuries didn't matter then, as I didn't know they existed. My new surroundings held many unfamiliar things. In my old world, I cleaned my teeth with a line of charcoal spread on my tiny finger. Now I had a toothbrush and some sort of flavorful paste to brush with. I owned four kinds of footwear. Sneakers for play, slippers for the dog, soft black shoes for daily school, and leather shoes with laces for special occasions. In the beginning, they were a drag on my feet, but soon I began to like their feel. Given that I had arrived barefoot, these were riches beyond my wildest imaginings. So, 
that um, actually is when I first joined Shati Bhavan and was discovering that life was going to be uh, more interesting with all the different kinds of footwear that you were going to be presented with. You had in back in the village, you did good with just one dress that you would wear literally for the whole week. But here you were changing clothes, um, almost three sets of clothes in a day. So everybody should buy this book. It really gives you that. In fact, even for the, the uh, webinar that's coming up with uh, David, uh, where I talk about the caste system in India, I'm going to strongly recommend that they pick up your book, a first-hand account of the whole, I mean, if there are differences in all countries, right? There is discrimination and prejudice in all countries. But what we suffer here in India and the degree of it, that I think is very hard for anyone who's not from here to understand unless they read your book, Shilpa. So I strongly recommend to the audience, please read this book as well. Uh, Shilpa, I have a few questions that have come in and I think mm -hmm. we should answer them. Okay. Please, Devani is asking, Shilpa, considering that you and all the kids spend so much time at Shanti Bhavan and you consider each other as brother and sister, is there someone you consider as your mom and dad? Yes, um, Dr. George serves the f role of a father because for many reasons. Firstly, because he's such a strong figure. He's someone who's invested very emotionally and uh, wholeheartedly into our well-being. And he is also someone with a great sense of humor. And the children uh, do get intimidated by his role in our lives. But when he uses his sense of humor, we realize that he, he's not lost touch with his inner child. And as kids, we love that. And he is someone who's constantly guiding us and giving us love and giving us the care as any good father would do. So he is uh, a strong, a very strong father figure. And for as a, the ones we have, like you just met Ms. Bina. So we have a few women like her. There's also Ms. Urmila Michael, who's the chief administrative officer of the institution. She plays a strong motherly role for the children. And some, there are a few children who do not have parents, but a good number of them um, have back home, have single parents. And the having stable parental figures back in Shanti Bhavan gives us children a chance to interact with uh, an adult that we can trust, an adult who we know is going to be there for us even in our darkest moments. And that gives us emotional stability and strength to face whatever comes our way. Wonderful. And Greta is asking, how are the students coping with the pressure to succeed and perform and to live up to the expectations that are being set? Um, uh, Kaveri, there are, um, you've seen the school, so for someone who's, ne who's actually not visited the school in person, maybe all of this could seem very strange and could seem like the children have uh, a very difficult life where they have to live up to other people's expectations constantly. But actually what Shanti Bhavan does is create an, a very loving home environment and a program that doesn't break you with its expectations but actually helps you to grow strong and rise to those expectations. And the way the program is structured and the kind of people who are involved in caring for the children, that makes it possible for the children to actually come to believe that there's a purpose to our lives. We should make something out of our lives, not just selfishly for ourselves alone, but for our families and not stop there. We have to help strangers in need, the way we had been helped. So the pressure is actually translates into a beautiful purpose to live up to and to live for. Mm -hmm. And in moments of stress, in moments um, of um, hardship, we have one another to seek love and comfort from. We have a huge support network of caretakers who are constantly there to hold our hands and guide us along the way. 
I don't think even your family uh, back home would be able to do that for you. That's true. Um, in fact, while we're here, uh, some of your friends, Derek Lindholm from Stockholm and Jenny Braxton from Scotland are saying hi to you, Shilpa. Wow. Uh, and Annette uh, is saying hello. And Teya is asking. I'm still in touch with Berit. Um, she continues to be such a strong supporter of the children. And she's a great friend of mine as well. And um, so I always love hearing from Berit. <laughs> yeah. And Kiki Jernheim, who runs a Swedish school here, she's also saying hello to you. And uh, she, Teya, who's a big supporter of Shanti Bhavan, has a question for you. Mm -hmm. What advice would you give to the other children who have graduated from Shanti Bhavan? How to handle life after a great experience at Shanti Bhavan? Because life outside can be tough. That's a great question. Um, for you would certainly be able to relate, uh, relate to it when you transition from boarding school. So after having lived for 14 years of your life at, in such a protected bubble, it is very difficult when you step out into an unprotected world. And there are a lot of challenges that come along with it. For example, you go from being cared, being looked after by such an intense team of people to suddenly being on your own in the big city. So, but even in the, but even there, Shanti Bhavan has placed a team of people who, uh, that includes Farah, people like her, who can reach out to, the, uh, to these young graduates as they transition out of home and transition into adulthood. And as they traverse the challenges that come along with it. So we have sources of support placed at every step of the way. And my advice to a young graduating uh, Shanti Bhavan student would be, remember that you're not alone, though at times it feels that way. And the challenges that you face are only going to make you stronger. And you are strong already. You are resilient. You've come so far. You've gone through tough times as a young child back, ho back at home. But you've, you've overcome that. And remember that you're not alone. And there's a whole team of people who, are, who love you and who are always going to be there for you. In fact, this question came from Teya. And she is also a supporter of Shanti Bhavan. I think they run a mentorship for students of Shanti Bhavan who want to get a window, uh, a safe window to look out of into the real world. So Teya and Krista, in fact, once I bumped into them and they were with one of the students of Shanti Bhavan, mm -hmm. giving her a flavor, uh, they had bought her an ice cream and I just bumped into them and I saw, okay, that's like an, another mother and father figure that the students get, right? We are very lucky, Kaveri. We have wonderful people like um, Farah and you and Taya who come into our lives, who embrace this mission as your own and who mentor graduates like me. And how many kids out there actually get this kind of support that the Shantiburn kids do? So we are very lucky. There's a lot of questions from uh, one of our viewers called Chandni, but unfortunately we're getting running out of time. So I'm just going to choose one of those questions, which I think is cool. Um, do you feel like going back to your village and opening a school like this one there? I would love to do that. Um, I, I think it would do wonders for the lives of the children back at home. It would give them opportunities that are going to open their mind and, the eye, and their eyes to how beautiful the world can actually be. Because all that they know is that the world is a cruel place. And I would love to do that. But in my own role, I'm training to become a child psychologist. And in my own role and um, to do justice to my profession, I plan of setting up a counseling center back in my village. So you're on your way to New York, right, Shilpa? Yes. <laughs> and you're going to be doing a PhD. So you're going to be yes. Dr. Shilpa Raj. Yes. <laughs> yes, <laughs> I'm dreaming of that. Whenever I don't know how things stand at the moment when universities abroad will open, but I have obtained a scholarship 
to pursue my PhD in child psychology at a university in Long Island. So there's someone in America who's read your book and her dream is to uh, volunteer in Shanti Bhavan. So she's, she's in the US. In fact, she was our first guest for this uh, vicarious exploration. And she took us on a trip to Gujarat where wow. we planned a trip for her. Her name is Christine. And I promise to connect you and her. And I'm please sure- do. <laughs> Yes, Please do. Yes, please do Kaveri. And thank you very much Farah. And uh, thank you Shilpa for being there. Lots thank of you for coming your way. I can't keep up with the messages anymore. And Shantani is clapping for you. Lots of people clapping for you on Facebook. Oh. And thank you so much. Thank, thank you everyone. It means a lot to me and my uh, siblings back here. You believing in our journey and supporting our dreams is going to take us far. Thank you so much. God bless you. Bye everyone. See you at the next webinars.